I'm Cyacat Cosplay and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial video on how to make the Spirit Blossom Kindred horns and mask. I am including a link in the description box down below to a PDF build guide and patterns for the horns, flower, mask, and bow. So if you are interested in checking those out, please go down to the description box and check out that link. All right, let's go ahead and get into this video and I'll show you guys how you can get your own set of these really cool horns. Like with every armor or prop project, I start with making patterns. If you want to make these kindred pieces yourself, you can actually skip this step as I have a build guide available with PDF pad patterns for the horns, the flower, and the mask. The link is in the description box down below. Oh, and yes, there is a pattern for the bow. Uh, I have not built that, but there is a line pattern for that as well. I need something to pattern off of, so the first step is making a horn form out of paper and tape. I've also done this in the past by sculpting a horn out of pink foam, but this is a little bit less messy and doesn't take quite as long as making a pink foam horn. I'm going to build up a general shape and follow a general 2D pattern shape that I sketch out. And every once in a while, I'm going to get up to check the horn against my own head. I've edited that out, but if you're making your own patterns, checking against a human reference is pretty necessary. Building a reference shape for something like horns is pretty crucial, and even though this took a while, it works really well. Once the reference shape is made, it's time to make a pattern off of it. To do this, I covered the horn shape in saran wrap and more tape. Once you've got that all taped up, I drew lines on to separate out the pieces and decided to go with four different sides for the horn. I made sure to label everything because horn patterns can get confusing as to what goes to what, believe you me. Once the horn pattern pieces were liberated off of the base horn shape, you need to make sure that the pieces can lay flat to trace. If they don't, you may need to clip open the pattern along the curved edges to get it to lie flat. This meant that I ended up having to clip into all of the horn pieces to get them to lie flat so they all have a clip in them. On the top pieces of the horn, I had to separate those patterns into two separate pieces due to how the horns are shaped. This will affect how things get glued together, but it will allow the pattern to lay flat and be traced onto foam much more easily. Sometimes I go straight from tape pattern to foam, but I decided to trace the patterns onto paper first to clean them up a bit before tracing them, and also this makes it easier for me to create digital patterns later. This is the way that I make patterns as I don't 3D model, and I also don't know how to use Peppercura. So I'm pretty lo-fi when it comes to patterns. I'm not sure if this is more time intensive or not, but it works for me. Anyways, horn patterns are ready to go. It's time for foam. I'm using six millimeter foam from TNT Cosplay Supply to build the horns. Link in the description box down below if you need to get some for yourself. Trace all your pieces onto the foam, cut out with a sharp box cutter, and away we go! This part's pretty straightforward. Make sure to copy over your registration marks and alignment notes. Horns actually do need registration marks. I usually don't use them or remember to put them on patterns, but I did this time, and so yeah! Once cut out, it's glue time! 
please, please, please wear a respirator with fume rated cartridges to protect your lungs from the fumes, from the glue. Make sure you do this, you will, your lungs will thank you later. I would recommend using contact cement for making horns. If you try any other type of glue, like hot glue, it will probably take forever. I don't recommend using contact cement as old as mine though. I really need to get into bottle loops. First, I'm going to glue the horn pieces that I've separated and all the clipped edges together. Cover both sides that you want to glue in glue allow to dry. I've edited out the drying time because who wants to watch glue dry? And then stick that stuff together. Putting together the horn pieces might be a bit tricky as the angles are weird. Just go slow, align the edges, and if it takes more than one try to get it right, don't worry. I messed up plenty of times myself putting these things together, but through the magic of editing, I cut all those mess ups out so you think I'm a foam master. Oh, wait, um, ignore what I just said. The next step in gluing everything together is attaching the top of the horn pieces together and the bottom of the horn pieces together. Well, actually the next step is forgetting to trim the edges of the top of the horn, starting to glue, remembering, cutting them, then gluing. So pro tip, to reduce the bulk at the tip of the horn, bevel down the inside of the foam on either side at the tip of the horn this will help the tip of the horn come together without bulky seams. So bevel, then glue the sides together, and then it's time to glue the two pieces to each other. When gluing together the horn pieces, make sure to line up the registration marks as best you can. This may involve needing to pull and stretch the foam on one side, pushing or pulling the foam around to make them line up. Carefully close those seams until voila, a horn. To finish the horn, there's actually a bunch more steps. To clean up all your sins, i.e. the seams, you're going to use a Dremel to sand all the seams flat. You will also need to use a heat gun to get the horn into the final shape that you want. I've actually gone ahead and made the second horn uh, and cut out that footage because you don't need to see me making a second horn, but they didn't quite match So I heated them up to get them into the correct shape You're also going to want to heat seal the entire piece. So make sure to hit the whole thing with your heat gun Heat it, dremel it, clean up the horns and then you are about ready to add the lines the detail lines into the horns to add the detail lines, I use a wood burning tool with an angled tip. I use a marker to mark where I wanted all the detail lines to be burned in. These lines are not on the pattern as where you want your detail lines to be may be different from mine, or you may choose to just paint this on the horns if you don't have a wood burning tool. Make sure to use a fume respirator when wood burning the foam. Heating EVA foam with a heat gun is pretty harmless, but the fumes from burning it are really noxious. Be careful when burning not to go too deep as it's only 6mm foam. I go pretty slowly and pause occasionally as the tip cools down a bit when you use it. Be extremely careful when handling a wood burning tool. It is very hot and you can easily burn yourself. I unfortunately know from experience. Once the lines are burned in, the last step before primer is gap filling. I use quick seal to fill in the gaps and seams. You can use other products such as foam clay, but the drying time on quick seal is only about an hour and this stuff is three bucks for a 160 mil tube, five and a half ounces. It is a non-toxic and you can use foam scraps and your fingers and water to work with it. Make sure to smooth out any excess with water and make sure you smooth it out before it dries because sanding this stuff is really difficult slash near impossible. You can wet sand it once it's dry, but you can 
avoid that if you just smooth it out before it dries. It does shrink as it dries, so you may need to do multiple coats. I usually recommend two to three coats for best results. I only did one because I'm speed building these things, so do as I say, not as I do. While the quick seal dries, it's time to make the flower and mask patterns for those foam pieces. The flower pattern is really straightforward. I only need the center button and one petal for the pattern. I made this out of two millimeter foam. You could do thicker foam or warbler, that's your preference. Cut, heat, shape the petals, glue together, a bit of hot glue, bam flower. The mask pattern is a bit trickier, but this isn't my first time at the mask rodeo. So with some basic face measurements in hand, I sketched out a paper pattern. To test it out, I cut out two pieces, taped them together, and very awkwardly took photos in a mirror to see what it looked like. I decided it wasn't quite long enough, so I redid it a second time and did the same procedure with the photos to check sizing and was happy with the second version. I sketched out the eye details roughly and then cut that out of foam. Uh, as a pro tip when cutting out the eyes, use a very, 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 very sharp blade and cut carefully to avoid any weird lines in your foam and needing to sand inside the eyes. Once cut out, glue the two sides together, heat shape, and BAM! Mask. I would recommend cleaning up the seam with a Dremel and gap filling like on the horns, but again I'm speed building and skip that step. It looks totally fine, but doing those things will make it a bit nicer. All of a sudden, the pieces have been primed with Plaza Dip. Make sure to prime before painting, because to not prime is a crime. You can prime with Hexflex, Flexbond, whatever, as long as the foam is primed before painting. I am using acrylics to do all my painting, except I did base paint the mask with white spray paint. I did go over the mask with white acrylic paint to even out the spray paint and to seal in all the spray paint. It's not as flexible as acrylic paint, it's prone to cracking at the top layer is spray paint. It can also be weirdly sticky, so adding in a layer of acrylic over it helps. Anyway, the majority of the time spent painting was on the horns. I did a base color layer using Folk Art number 417, which is Teddy Bear Brown. Over that, I only used two different colors, uh, number 452, Raw Sienna, and Liquitex Basic Mars Black. Mixing those two in various ratios, I painted the horns to their final look. I swear painting cosplay looks like a hot, hot mess right up until you finish the paint job. Blending colors in acrylics is difficult. I usually base out the colors in blocks first and then work to blend the paint together. So as you can see, over the base layer of the paint, I have gone in and blocked out the paint colors in various color blocks. And then once those blocks are blocked out, I'm gonna go in and blend. To blend acrylic paint, the best way to do it is to use a fairly dry brush with a very little bit of paint on it and work to blend the colors together. This works pretty well. I'm not the best at describing how I paint, but learning to blend acrylics can take some time and patience and practice. This is not my first time at the painting rodeo, so if it takes you a bit of time to get the paint to look right, that's totally okay. It takes practice. I also painted one horn, knocked off for the day, came back the next morning, started painting the other horn, and decided the first horn was too light. So I painted the one and went back and repainted the first one. Everybody makes mistakes, everybody's going to need to redo something at some point. I do it a lot. Painting can be a bit finicky, so taking a fresh look at your paint job 
after a day or so can really help you hone in on the look that you're going for. I also sort of go into a zone when painting and can spend a really long time if I'm not paying attention. I probably spent a good three plus hours working on the paint for these horns. Boy. Anyways, the flower was painted with a mix of Liquitex Basic Cadmium Yellow and Titanium White. The red on the mask was marked out with a red pen and very carefully with a hopefully steady hand and a small paint brush painted in very carefully with cadmium red deep hue. The mask pattern has the markings on it. I'd recommend cutting them out to use as a stencil. Don't be like me and freehand stuff because I apparently just like to throw caution to the wind and go for it for a lot of things. Last step is attachments. I added a bit of black bias tape to the eyes of the mask and glued some bias tape to either side of the mask to add ties. You could use elastic or whatever is handy. You could attach the horns directly to a wig, to elastic, to bias tape, or to a headband like I did. If you do use a metal headband, make sure to mark where that headband is going to be placed, marked on the band and the horns and make sure to glob on a lot of hot glue to secure the horns on. Use a dab of hot glue to secure the flower, and voila! Horn and Mask for Spirit Blossom Kindred. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any additional questions about how to make these horns or the mask or anything else related to building Spirit Blossom Kindred, please leave a comment down below. And don't forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button so you can catch all my new content. Alrighty, I'll see you guys in the next video.